All right. So this was worth a total of 18 points. Okay. And I'll try and decide for how many points go where. It uh, looks like on the front, each problem was worth about three points. So problem number one, you have this. Something like this, right? And then they tell you that's right angle. And then they tell us that's 12x plus 6y. And that's 10y. And that's 5x. Yes? Yes. OK, and it says use the information to write a system of equations and solve. OK, so things I know. I know that 10y plus 5x has to be equal to 90. Agree? Now, I can't just solve for x because I have both x and y. I guess you could solve for x or y and sub substitute it in. What do you know about this angle then here? It's also 90 degrees. Good. That's a 6y. Sorry. I, that's a 6. All right. So elimination would work on this problem. Yes? If so, what, do, what should I do to undo it? Um, what? I know we have perfect scores out there, so what should I do? Do what? Subtract 10y on the top one and then divide by 5. Oh, you're trying to solve for solve them for the variable? OK. I would have done elimination on it. but So I would multiply that by 6 and this whole thing by negative 5. If you do that, you're going to wind up finding the answer to be in 4 comma 7. So this would have been 60y plus 30x uh, equals 540. 540, right? Did I do that right? And that's negative 60y. Minus 36x equals, what's 5 times 90? Uh, what? 450. 450. Did I do this right? Oh, wait, I'm off someplace. Where am I off? Which one am I getting rid of? Oh, OK. So those cancel. That gives me negative 6x. Wait, I'm off. I'm off. What is it? Five times six is not I've been in an error. Shoot, where did I make an error at? Oh. Oh. So that's there's an X there. Oh my gosh, I'm goofed up. Shoot. What did I do? What's wrong? What? <laughs> what do you need help with? I just realized I had the answer, so I didn't put them into the box. You put the wrong answers in each box. <laughs> I had the answers, but for some reason I put X and Y. Yeah, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you put, boy, why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, there's no equal sign, so don't say equal. I have to test in two. Uh, yeah. All right. What's your question back there? All right, I just goofed this up. 10y plus 5x, and then 12x. Uh, if I would have lined up these things correctly, I got to reline these up. So 5, uh, come on. 5x plus 10y equals 90. I'm just rewriting that, and then 12x plus 6y equals 90. Okay. Then if I would have went through and said, okay, I'm going to use elimination, so I'll multiply this top one by 10, this bottom one by 10, and this one by negative 6. So that should work out nicely. So on top, negative 6 goes here. So that's negative 30x minus 60y equals negative 540. Is that right? And then if I multiply all this by 10 here, here, and here, that's uh, 120x plus 60y equals 900. Did I do that right? Yes. OK. Woo. Oh, my gosh. All right, so gosh. Uh, that's 90x, right? And what is that? Um, 360. And then x is equal to 4. Perfect. So that's the first part of my answer. Well, I take that 4 and plug it back into either here or here. So I plug it into this top one right here. That's going to give me 20 plus 10y equals 90. A little too much talking. 
and then so y is equal to seven there. Woo! Okay. Uh, that was a rough start, but I got there. Yo. So for problems like this, can you set up like the part where like y is a line and zero is the next one? Do they both have to be equal to the same thing? They don't. They don't. No. Um, if, if they're not equal to the same thing, that just means you're using elimination. This just has to be a fluke that they happen to equal the exact same thing, which is great. I mean, because you're talking about complementary angles, but that's about it. All right, are we okay so far? Can I move off this one? Yo. Oh, thanks, man. All right. A, B, C, right? That's the midpoint. So this means that and that are the same length. Yes? Okay, they also tell us that this distance here is uh, 6x plus y. And then this whole, I get the hiccups out, excuse me, is 5x plus 3y. And then what else do we know? The whole thing, the whole thing is 26 as well. So that's equal to 26. Are we okay so far? Yes. Okay. So that would mean that 12x plus 2y has to equal 26. Why can I say that right there? It's the midpoint. If I double this, I know the whole thing has to be equal to the whole length. And then I have 5x plus 3y equals 26. Using our elimination, we should be able to get through. Let's see, 5x plus 3y equals 26, 12x. Perfect. So from here, I might choose to multiply this whole thing by 4 and this whole thing by negative 3, so that's what, 48x on top plus 8y. Why did I choose 4 and 3? Wait, I'm, I have something wrong. You should do 2 and 3. Yeah. Two, 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Why did I do 4? What am I doing? That's a 4 right there, right? Wait, what are we doing? No, you're yeah. supposed to do yeah, by three. Top by three, bottom by two. Oh my goodness. Three and that by negative two. Okay. Again, too much talking. There we go. 36x plus 6y. What's uh, 26 times three? Um, uh, 78? Yeah. Is that right? No. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, 10x minus 6y. What's negative 2 times 26? Negative 2. Negative 2, thank you. Woo! And that cancels that. That gives me 26x equals 26. Is that right? Yes, sir. Oh, sweet. So x is equal to 1. All right, so I have to find y now, right? Well, I found it right here. Um, so I'm going to plug that in right here. So I have 5 times 1 plus 3y equals 26. Yep. 5 plus 3y equals 26. Am I right? 3y equals 21. If I subtract, y equals 7. Done. Yay. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. Number 3. 1, 2, 3. That's the right angle. They tell us that BD bisects, so if it bisects are cuts into two equal parts, I know that this is 3x plus 7y. I know that this is 2x plus 9y plus 2. What do we know about them? They equal each other. So if, they, if you wanted to, you could set the two equal to each other and modify them a little bit. So perhaps I... Whoa, whoa. I'm out. I made a mistake. That's a two. Jeez. Two, nine, two. Okay. Am I right now? I don't know, dude. But you're just up there working stuff. All right. Subtract three x. Subtract three x. That's negative x here. Uh, subtract seven y. Subtract seven y. Subtract two to bring it over. Subtract two to bring it over. Uh, so plus two y equals negative two. That's one of my equations. How do I find my other equation? How do I find it? Anybody? Um, um is good. This plus this equals what? 90. 90. So that gives me 5x plus 16y is equal to, it's equal to 90. I had a plus 2, so I'm going to make it 88. Is that okay? You ever want to see what I just did? 
I went this plus this, but I moved the 2 over. Yes? OK. But then I have negative x plus 2y equals negative 2. Multiply this whole bottom by 5, which should be fine. I get 5x plus 16y equals 88. Negative 5x plus 10y. Add those together. 26y equals 78. x or y is equal to 3. That's my y component. I'm going to take that. Plug it back in. So I'll plug it into whatever equation you want. It's going to still work. I'll plug it in right there. So I get negative x plus 6 equals negative 2. Negative x is equal to negative 8. So x is equal to 8. 8 comma 3 is our answer. Yo. I guess you could have, yeah. Because they're because you know they bisect. Yeah. And that should have been the same exact answer. So that was sweet. Thank goodness. Alright. Number four. Number four. 100 degrees, 80 degrees. X plus 4y degrees. Two, uh, is that 2x plus 2y? Can I help that metal thing of a jabber? All right. So I know that this plus this have to equal what? 180. And this plus this equals what? Sweet. So uh, x plus 4y plus you plus 100 equals 180. And then 2x plus 2y plus 80 equals 180. So x plus 4y is equal to 80. I just modified the top one. And then the bottom one, 2x plus 2y equals 100. A couple of ways I could do it. Now I'm going to combine those two together. Uh, perhaps I'm going to multiply this whole thing by negative 2. So I'm going to take this top equation, go x plus 4y equals 80. Nothing changed. Bottom, what am I multiplying by? Negative 2. That's negative 4x minus 4y equals negative 200. This cancels this. Negative 3x is equal to negative 120. Are we good? So x equals what? 40. So that's my first answer. How do I find my second answer? Plug it back in. Love it. So I'm going to plug it into... Oh, this is fine right here if I wanted to. So I'm going to get 80 plus 2y equals 100. So 2y is equal to 20y equals 10. Sweet. Are we all right? Yes, sir. I just had a student tell me that it wasn't fair that I put this type of problem on the test, not from this class, from another, another class. Must be my sixth period then. Woo! Okay, we're factoring it. First thing, I look at it, I can factor out what out of both? Two. Two. And that leaves me 9x squared minus 25. Now, some of you gave me that answer, you're like, dude, I'm done. Uh-uh. Difference of two squares right here. Difference of two squares. 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5. There is no equal sign. There is no way I solve these for x. Get it? Like here. Like this way. Okay? Yo. Uh, I did this differently. Did you get the same answer? Uh, no. Okay, they did it wrong I then. Didn't it, so I had to type it up too. I would have, yeah. Difference two squares. Fa factor a GCF first in factoring. Grace common factors two. And then factor out anything out left. Cool? All right, number six. I have 6x squared plus 11x minus 10. Uh, no greatest common factor. We can do it a number of different ways. I'm going to say, what's our magic number? Our magic number looks like negative 60. Still with me? So I know that I have to have positive and negative. Still with me? I like to do it because I do all the factors all at once. Some of you are like, oh, go, go, hurry up. It's like watching somebody type, and you're like, no, it's right here. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Good. You, your parents ever get on the computer, you know, on the internet? Okay, click that button. Oh, where's the button? Uh, just move it all the way. Sorry. I'm off task. You guys know that. Uh, 4 and 15, uh, 3 and 20, 
5 and 12. Which two will work? One being positive, one being negative. When we add them together, it gives me positive 11. 4 and 15, which one has to be positive? 15, good. So I get 6x squared plus 4x minus. That's a minus. I knew I shouldn't have drank that mouthwash. It's just a gargle with. All right, uh, then I go plus 15x uh, minus 10. Yes? This is a way that you might have learned how to factor. Some of you might have done this way, which is fine as well, um, where you put the 6x squared here and the negative 10 and you split them, which is fine. Um, what's my greatest common factor there? 2x. Two, uh, two Love it. That leaves me 3x minus 2. And then what's my greatest common factor there? Yeah, you know that. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, so that gives me 3x minus 2. These both have the same exact term, yes? So I get 2x plus 5, 3x minus 2. It is now factored. If you're having trouble with factoring, you need help with factoring, it's not going away. You need to come see me saying, can you help me with factoring? The answer is yes. Can you help me with factoring these 10 problems as class is starting? No. Come find me, okay? I'll help you. I get it. Factoring is not the most fun thing to do. And some of you got it real quick. Some of you are like, oh, wait. It changes every time. All right. Uh, last one. 16x squared minus 24x plus 9. Still with me? All right. Some of you might have seen this right away, that this is a perfect square. So this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. No GCF. It's going to do this. Some of you saw that right away. Those of you who didn't see it right away, do it our normal way. 16 times 9, I don't even know what that is. Uh, what's that, 54, 5, 144. So all the factors of 144, both being negative, that are going to work. It'll factor out. So you have to go through and figure it out. I mean, it comes down to uh, what one of the two factors, both negative, that up to 12, 12s and 12s. And then this would have worked out nicely if you had gone 16x squared minus 12x minus 12x plus 9. Look here what I have in common. I have a 4 and an x in common. 4x minus 3. Is that right? No. And then, what? No, no not that. Just to put it on the answer. Oh, just kidding. Never mind. Oh, okay. And then what do I have in common between these? 3. Yeah, and it should be a negative because of that one, right? 4x minus 3. So I have a 4x minus 3 and 4x minus 3. And what do I have left here? I have a 4x minus 3. I have a common between these two. And I have a 4x minus 3 right there. And this should be the same as that. If it's not, I get something wrong. Johnny? Uh, I read it as a 4x minus 3 squared, but it turned out to be 4x minus 3 squared. 4x minus 3 squared. 4x minus 3 squared. And in parentheses, quantity squared. I marked yours wrong. Did I really? Ooh. I'll give you that point back right now. Well, give me a second. Thanks for checking me. Are there any other questions from this? Okay. So, so part of it, we're not going to have any on Schoology, which I know most of you are going to cry yourselves to sleep over. I'm sorry. Um, but then you have that quiz I just gave back. So part of that, you'll see that kind of information. But we're also going to see this it's midpoint formula. So let's talk about uh, problem one to six. Are there any questions on one to six? Number 12, good, who's paying attention? Okay, one to six, is there any questions on how we find the midpoint between two sets of points? Does anyone need it? Yeah. Wait, can you just take two out of those? Yeah, pick one. Three. Um, six. six, sounds good. Yeah. All right, so uh, our Find the, oh, find the distance. So we need to find the distance. So our distance formula is this. And what you need to know this, as far as I know, how are you going to remember? I don't know. Figure it out. Make flashcards or something. Okay? Label this x1, y1, x2, y2. We okay? Okay? And we're finding the distance, right? Give the coordinates. Find the distance between, find the distance between each pair of points. Okay? So finding the distance. So square root x2 I have labeled as 40 minus 10 quantity squared plus 30 minus 20 quantity squared. Okay. Root 
4, 40 minus 10 is 30. 30 squared is? 900. 900. Okay. And then that's 10. 10 squared is 100. So I get the square root of 1,000. If you get there, you're going to get almost all the points correct, but I need you to rationalize it. Okay. Here we go. That's the same thing as 100 times 10. Why am I choosing 100? Yeah. It's the largest part. Largest perfect square, good. Shh. Square root of 100 is? 10. So the answer to this problem is 10 square root 10 is the distance between those points. Make sense? Any other on 1 through 6 to go over? 1 through 6 only. Go on once. Go on twice, yeah. 2. two. Distance equals x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. Good? Okay. If your neighbor's talking, tell them to hush. You're being disrespectful. Yep. Zero minus minus two is zero plus two. Is that okay? Did I do that? Okay. Squared plus y2, four minus minus three. So four plus three. Are you okay with me doing that? So four minus minus three is four plus three. Is that okay? All right, uh, that's 2. 2 squared is 4. Okay, that's 7. 7 squared is 49. So this comes out to square root 53. That will not break down any further. Cool? Any other questions up through number 6? Hot dog and biscuits and gravy. Sounds pretty good to me. All right, uh, 7 through 12. Given the coordinates and the endpoints of the segment, find each midpoint. Find the midpoints. Is there any questions on 7 through 12? Yeah. 11. 11. Let's do it. Number 11, we have 7, comma, negative 3. We have 4, comma, 8. I'm going to label as x1, y1, x2, y2. I know my midpoint formula is x midpoint, comma, y midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay, again, you need to know that formula as far as I know. Okay, let's, let's plug in our stuff. Uh, x1, we have 7 plus 4 over 2. And I have negative 3 plus 8 over 2. Uh, 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 over 2 is 11 over 2. That sounds good. Can you go 5.5? Sure. Okay, uh, negative 3 plus 8 is 5. 5 over 2 is 5 over 2. Could you put 2.5? Yes, 2.5, sure. Okay, so some sort of equivalent. That is the midpoint. That is the middle of those two points. Any other questions up through number 12? We're good? All right. Um, oh, man, we got all kinds of cool stuff here. Let's just do all of number 13 because, like, someone said, I can't do E. We have to do all the other parts anyhow. Is that okay if I do number 13? Yeah. Anyone got a loose sleep over it? All right, this is problem number 13. Still with me? Point A, 0, 0. B is 8, 0. Still with me? C is 8, comma 6. OK. All right, so I'm going to try and plot this the best I can. Uh, I know I have point A is here at 0, 0. Yes? Point B is at 8, 0. Is that OK? And point C is 8, 8, 6. What kind of triangle does that look like? Right. It looks like a right triangle. So if it's a right triangle, do we know the base and do we know the height? Yes. We do. But I don't even know about that. Draw points A and B and C. Oh, got it. Find the length of A to B. Okay? So this length here is how far? That's 8. How far is here to here? 6. Okay? Do I have to use the distance formula or is there another thing I know? The Pythagorean theorem. So I know that 8 squared plus 6 squared is equal to AC, second AC squared. Is that okay? With uh, 64 plus 36, that's 100. Square root of 100 is 10. So segment AC is 10. Is that okay? Is everyone cool with how we found that? Could we have used the distance formula? Well, being the distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem, I'd say yes. Find the perimeter. The perimeter 
I'm just going to add them all up. So point C is the perimeter. So I have 8 plus 6 plus 10. That's 16. 26 units. Is that all right? No? No. It is 24. Good. Thank you guys for watching. 24. I can add things well. 24 units. Boy, I'll tell you. Find the coordinates of the midpoints. Okay. Well, this one should be a given. That should be 4, comma, 0. Still with me? No? no? What? Yes? Yeah. Oh, because it's a yes. Okay. And then the middle of this one should be? 8. Is the point 8 what? 3. 3? Everyone agree? I'm over this way, so I'm just finding the middle of this. This is 6 all the way up. And if I find the middle of this, I don't know, that's uh, the point 8, comma, 6. That's 0, 0. So if I'm going to find the difference, uh, the distance between 0, 0 or the midpoint, right? And 8, 6 is the midpoint I'm finding. So in the midpoint, I'm going to go 8 plus 0 divided by 2. 6 plus 0 divided by 2. 8 over 2 is 4. 6 over 2 is 3. So the midpoint of this is 4, comma, 3. What do you think? We got all that. Find the lengths of all three sides of the triangle. I connect, we already have that. We just found it, right? Wait, 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 wait. Find the lengths of all three sides of the triangle formed by the connecting the three. Oh, the three midpoints. Dude. All right. Let's see. Let's go with, I want to go, wait, hang on. My, mid, bleh, my midpoints, this to here, to here, to here. Is that right? Is that right? Well, I think that has to be four. Why is that? Well, from here to here, from here to here is eight. Halfway is four, so that has to be four. And what about this one? Three. Yeah, because I, I got to go all the way up to six, so that has to be three. And that's a three squared is? Four squared is? Add them together, 25 squared, 25 is? Ooh, that's a three, four, five right triangle. Okay. Find the perimeter of the triangle formed by all three connecting midpoints. Uh, 3 plus 4 plus 5, 8 and 5 is, or 7 and 5 is, jeez, 12 units. Oh, my goodness. Talk to me. How did you get the 4 on the bottom? Because it bends a little. Oh, no, no. So, so this distance here would have been already 4, right? Uh -huh. So this would have went straight up to that point. So then the whole distance was 8, so this from here to here has to be 4 as well. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so when you're finding the midpoint of AC, can't you just take the X from yes. AC and the Y from BC? Because you got the same thing without doing any math. Oh, <gasps> you're right. Yes. Good. What generalization seems plausible on your answers above? Um... Let's see. If I find all the midpoints of a triangle, then the perimeters, and then, so if I find the triangle, I find all the midpoints of a triangle, and then find the perimeter of the midpoints of the triangle that forms in the new triangle, that forms the big triangle. Did I say that right? So I think this is my generalization. Uh, midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. Still with me? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so let's call this A. Let's call this B. Let's call this C. Still with me? So A plus B plus C is the perimeter of the big triangle, yes? Mm -hmm. And then if I call this X and Y and Z, still with me? I know that X plus Y plus Z is equal to the perimeter of the smaller triangle, and the difference between these should be half. The perimeter should be half. So let me think. Ooh, that, this is a good teachable moment. I love this stuff. Okay, so a length. If I were to take the length of something, it's one dimension. Yes? If I were to take the perimeter of something, that's just the length. So that's also one, di one dimension. Like if I said this side's 10 feet, this side's 12 feet, and this side's 15 feet, I could add them all together, and my answer is still in feet. I don't change it to feet squared, do I? Find the perimeter. So, being you're talking about a one-dimensional situation, perimeter, and a one-dimensional thing, perimeter, 
The ratio is one to is, is you know it, whatever our ratio should be. So in this case, it's half. Oh my goodness! All right, I'm so excited. I'm I'm happy. Uh, which one do you want to see? 14 A or B? 14 A or B? Neither. Sweet. Yes. B. All right. 14 B. We have this is an endpoint. And this is our midpoint. Still with me? So this is x1, y1. This is x, m, y, m. Agree? We have the midpoint given, so we know our midpoint formula is this. x midpoint, y midpoint equals x1 plus x2 divided by 2, the average of the x's, the average of the y's. Let's plug in what we know. Um, so x... So this is going to go with this right here, right? So I have 2 is equal to x1 is negative 4 plus x sub 2, I don't know, over 2. So that's going to be 4 equals negative 4 plus x2. What's x2 going to be equal to? 8. Good. So that's my missing one. And then let's do the same thing for y. So I have ym, which is 5, equals y1, which is negative 8 plus y2 over 2. How do I solve this? Multiply by 2, I get 10 equals negative 8 plus y2. So what is y sub 2 equal to? 18. So my other point, the other point is at this point. So if this was the end point, this is the other end point, and this happens to be in the middle of them. You doing all right? I think I'm fine. All right, recall the area of a triangle is one half base time side. Find the area on each triangle. Oh, this is a good problem. All right, number 15. Do I have enough time? Yeah. Dude, the bell's going to ring. Okay, deal with it. 0, 0, SAS, 10, 0, and 5, 8. Here's my triangle. How tall is this triangle? It's 8 tall. How do I know it? Because we're all the way up to 8. So find the area of each. So the base is 5. Oh, wait, the base, base is 10. The base is 10, right? This distance here is 10. So 10 times 8, 80. Half of that, 40. 40 square units is the area. Units, yeah. Can you do um, 16C? Because when you plot the points, it doesn't make a square or a rectangle. Oh, it doesn't? No. Well, okay. All right. Are we turning in 1.7 today? No. Oh, you can study for it. Sorry to disrupt. Do, can I do B or C, or are we okay with those? Do C, do C on 15? 16. 16. 16. Yeah. 16C. Let's go to 16C and see what happens here. 16C. They tell us it's a rectangle. Yes? So I got four. Shh. Don't start packing up. Come on, you got time. 8 comma 4, 1, 2, or 5, 6, 7, 8 comma 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Uh, 4 comma 8, 4 comma 8. So this should be an 8 way up here. And 0, 4. Oh, wait. Hold on. So they already told you it's a rectangle. So all you have to do, and I, let's pretend I can draw really good really well. So I would find the distance from here to here and then find this distance right here to here. So this distance and this distance should be the exact same. This distance and this distance should be the exact same using the distance formula and then you'll just go area of the rectangle is base times height, right? Did anyone find any of these? Or oh, we have an answer, don't we? 16, 16C. They say the area is 32 square units. Okay, again, distance formula is going to help you out. What else came from this? Talk to me. Um, for that one, you have to use a distance formula because they're not straight lines, right? Yes. Okay. Well, they, they're all straight lines. They just have to be all cockeyed and yeah. crooked. Okay. Yep. Yeah. The problem was like uh, 15 and 16 didn't know what that was. Sure. Could be. I mean, you know how to plot, right? Yeah. And you feel okay with the distance formula? Yeah. I mean, that's really all you have to do. Yeah. Can you do 15B, please? 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. 15 speed. Yes. All right, so we have 2 2. We have 8 2. 5, 6, 7, 8. So you know that distance is 6, right? And then you have 10 6. So it looks like that. Okay? So what you have to realize is from here to here, that's going to be your height. So if this was the point uh, 10, 6, and this was the point 8, comma, 2. So from 2 to 6, that means the height here has to be 4 because the 2 to the 6, right? We're not worried about this length here. We're just worried about the height of it. And then this... This distance here, that's your base, is 6 because it goes from 2 comma 2. So 2 to 8 is 6. So uh, 6 times 4 is 24. 24 half of it is 12 to 12, 12 square units. We okay? Study. Got it? Bye.